everyone and welcome back to another episode with the Nairobi Hospital. Today I'm joined by Dr. Kalida Soki, a kidney specialist. Welcome Dr. Tari. and thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for the opportunity Madoni, especially this, uh, considering that this is uh, World Kidney Month. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I would like us to start off by expounding what the kidney does. You have two kidneys in your body. Uh, both kidneys are located at your back on either side of your backbones and uh, the kidneys basically have four functions. Um, the first is salt, when, salt balance, uh, the second will be excretory functions, so water and the waste products in your body. The third uh, that most people don't know is that the kidney is necessary for you to make red blood cells in your body and the fourth is that the kidney is vital for um, uh, the health of your bones, for you to have strong bones. So kidneys will make urine at any one point. They are constantly making urine. And this is stored in the bladder. And the urine is a, a combination of excess water, excess salts, and the waste products of metabolism. And uh, it's stored in the bladder. And when the bladder gets full, then you need to go and empty your bladder. As we near the day, Rating the World Kidney Day. Absolutely. I know the subject will be mostly on diseases. Yes. Maybe we could touch on the diseases that are most common with the kidney. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, as it stands in Africa, the most common causes of kidney diseases still remain the inflammatory diseases of the kidney. Um, things that we call glomerulonephritis. Uh, the name is long and hard. But more and more, um, as our lifestyles change, we are seeing blood pressure, high blood pressure, and uh, diabetes becoming much more common in terms of causes of kidney failure. And this is consistent with the changes that we are seeing in terms of diet and lifestyle within our society. And how can one tell that they have a kidney disease? Um, so our kidneys usually function at greater than 90, 90%. And this is a calculation that we make based on a simple blood test called the creatinine level. So at any one time, we can check the percentage function of both our kidneys together. Um, as the kidney disease starts and progresses, the percentage kidney function falls. Unfortunately, there are no signs and symptoms of reduction in percentage kidney function until the percentage is below 20%. At this point, then the waste products start accumulating in the body the kidney is unable to remove them effectively from the body. And so you get the features of that in the form of swelling of the legs and facial puffiness, um, poor appetite, maybe weight loss, dry and itchy skin, um, vomiting, and at the later stages, confusion and heart problems. Problem, uh, if nobody intervenes or no treatment is given, then the blood pressure goes up, the bones get very weak, and we might see low blood levels. Just to take you back on where you've mentioned that it's very, it's a bit difficult to notice the symptoms until mm -hmm. it's way below 20%. Yes. Is there some, something that one can do on a regular basis yes. to mm. get to know about the kidney health? So we recommend, especially if you're at risk, if you are diabetic, if you have high blood pressure, if you are a smoker, if you are overweight, then we recommend that you get tested or screened at least once a year and have an idea of how your kidney function is going on. So what causes the kidney diseases? So as we said, um, inflammatory diseases of the kidney, diabetes, high blood pressure. More and more often, we are seeing damage caused to kidneys by, and this is acute damage, your kidneys were perfectly okay, and now we see damage because of over-the-counter purchase of medication, uh, especially painkillers, um, uh, such as ibuprofen or diclofenac, which many people don't know are harmful to your kidneys. People also taking herbal concoctions, especially when we don't know what is in those herbal concoctions, and we find a lot of kidney damage because of them. So we would advise against this. Mm -hmm. So how can you advise people who are at higher risk of uh, getting kidney diseases, yes. the prevention measures that they can take up? If you're diabetic, you have to control your blood sugar. Uh, if you're hypertensive, then you have to control your blood pressure. And this is using medication. Um, if you're a smoker, you need to stop smoking. If you're overweight, weight loss is key. At the same time, however, I cannot emphasize enough 
that the best way to prevent kidney disease is to lead a healthy and health uh, a healthy lifestyle. Um, so this includes eating lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, avoid dehydration, drinking enough water in a day, um, and uh, basically, yeah, I think that's the key. And exercise, lots of exercise is, is key. Which ages or gender are predisposed to kidney diseases? Let me make it very clear that everybody can get kidney disease, including children. And we even have children on dialysis and children that we have transplanted in this hospital. But we are seeing younger and younger people coming in with complications from high blood pressure and diabetes more than we ever did before. And this is because of the changes in lifestyle and the changes in diet that I had mentioned previously. Um, however, we could say that um, women might be a little bit more predisposed to get kidney injury because of kidney diseases that are associated with pregnancy and uh, because they are also predisposed to connective tissue diseases such as lupus. The programs, are there programs that Nairobi Hospital is having towards addressing kidney diseases? Nairobi Hospital is actually a renal center. I'd like to say that um, we have three nephrologists, that's kidney specialists, in the hospital, employed by the hospital, and many of the nephrologists in Kenya do their work here also. Specifically, we have a dedicated kidney disease clinic um, that, is, uh, that is ongoing. Um, to curb the trend that we have been seeing in terms of changes in lifestyle and diet, we have nutritionists, a nutritionist clinic available five days a week. Uh, we also have a weight loss clinic to assist in that area and we have a vascular clinic for the complications that we see. We also have dedicated diabetes clinics and high blood pressure clinics. As a hospital, we provide services, specialized services to treat kidney disease. Of course, all the medications are available, but we also provide advanced treatment, treatments such as plasmapheresis for inflammatory kidney diseases. Uh, we have also partnered with NHIF to ensure that um, dialysis is affordable at Nairobi Hospital and uh, NHIF catered to two dialysis sessions a week, that is hemodialysis. And within the Nairobi Hospital kidney transplantation package, NHIF um, will assist the donor and the recipient in payment from 30% to 50% of the entire cost of the surgery. Thank you very much, Dr. Soki. Thank you also for enlightening us about the kidney disease. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.